thank you, Mr. Secretary, for being with us here today. And thank you also for the visit uh, that uh, we had in March. I enjoyed our conversation. And we talked about apprenticeships there. So I'd like to ask a question. We have some uh, excellent apprenticeship programs in our state, and I recently visited one at Marshall University's uh, at the Manufacturing Tech Accelerator at the Robert C. Byrd Institute at Marshall. And it's providing participants with the skills they need to succeed in entry-level positions in manufacturing. You complete 2,000 hours of paid on-the-job training from a participating employer, and the apprentices will qualify for a certificate uh, for, uh, to be a manufacturing technician. Uh, I met a veteran there who had obtained this certification after retiring fully from his, uh, from his career in the military. And he's also now, excitingly, uh, in the process of attaining a patent for an efficient manufacturing process that he created just months ago. Very, very impressive story. So after visiting RCBI and after our conversation, I, I, I'm wondering about the, um, your, your approach at labor on apprenticeships, whether it's organized labors or some such as the apprenticeships that are being offered through this program. Um, and, uh, you know, would you say you support a wide range of these, and how are you approaching this at the, at the department? Yeah, I, I absolutely thank you first and foremost for having me in your district. Um, I support a wide range of apprenticeships in different industries. Um, I think the model of the building trades is the gold standard. Um, $2 billion a year investment, all by companies. Um, and it, there's no federal investment or state investment. There's some small grants around for different programs, but the majority of those programs get funded. And you're talking about high quality training going on there. Um, that's one model we could use. I think that there's an opportunity for us in this country to, to really have the ability to partner with community colleges, uh, workforce development programs, uh, I had the Urban League in my office yesterday. We talked a little bit about diversity and inclusion. Um, so, I, you know, I, I've asked this, I've answered this question a couple times today about apprenticeships, but I hope by this next year's hearing, when I'm here, we're able to point to several dozen apprenticeship programs that we're kicking off in the country, Good. whether it's in healthcare, IT, uh, early child care, different, different industries that, that we can actually uh, make a difference in. Right. Well, I look forward to that announcement. And uh, certainly, as we see workforce shortages in just about everything, uh, this is, I think, going to be extremely important because uh, uh, the, not just the skill sets developed, but the time that it takes uh, in certain instances, I think we can uh, maybe shortcut some of the time uh, to get a trained individual on the job. Um, I'm very proud that I supported the nomination of uh, Christopher Williamson to be the Assistant Secretary for the Mine Safety and Health Administration, or MSHA as we call it at home. He's a proud son of Williamson, West Virginia, and we're happy that he is there. Uh, I don't know what, uh, what initiatives he, he or you plan to take in the mine safety, obviously. Uh, it's extremely important. Uh, I will tell you that our mines are operating at um, much higher capacity than they have in the past uh, year or so because of the increased demand, because of the geopolitical situation we see around the world. We're happy about that. We're not happy about the geopolitical situation. We're happy we got more miners to work. So uh, in, the MSHA, in the MSHA area, what, what are you guys looking at and um, how can we be helpful? Well, well uh, one thing we're looking at is we've seen an increase in fatalities this year in mining. Um, and a, a couple months ago, we had the, the major miners on a call. We did a call with them to talk about sharing best practices on safety. Um, something I did when I was the mayor of Boston, whenever we had high, high shootings in Boston, we brought all the stakeholders to the table. We did the same thing with the mining industry. Uh, we are asking for an increase in mine safety work in this budget. Um, it, it, Chris is doing a great job. He's, you know, his feet are wet. He, he didn't ha there wasn't much of a learning curve there. He, he knew the issue. Uh, and certainly they're working hard, and, and we, we, we do need to, we get some money from the American Rescue Plan, and we need some additional funding on the mine safety. We're actually seeing an increase in mining, maybe not coal mining, but we're seeing an increase in mining in America as well, metal mines and things like that. So we need to make sure we stay on top of it. And we, and right. Anytime we acknowledge that there's, there's a tragedy happening, we're, we're on top of it. Well, good. Uh, and I know a lot of those can occur in a lot of different, they, they may not be at the face of the mine in the instance of a coal mining, a lot of them are vehicular accidents and, and things like that on the work site. So uh, anything we can do to make them safer 
and keep them healthy is, is important. Last thing, I'm just going to kind of put this on your radar screen. I've always been interested in youth build. I've visited the Randolph County uh, Housing Authority has a youth build program that they've had for years. And then for some reason last year, no funding. And so it was kind of disruptive. If you could help me kind of figure out, they did get their funding for this year, so we're very pleased about that. Um, but we want to have the, the continuity that you need in a program like that. So if we could work with your office to try to figure out how to make sure they have a uh, uh, ironclad application that they can continue this program. No, absolutely. I've been a supporter of Youth Build for 25 years. Uh, when I was a legislator in Massachusetts, we used to support it. And I know that, that Youth Build got a 20, I think I want to say $24 million grant this year uh, on, on, uh, on, on Youth Build, but also clean energy. So some of the transition as well. Good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator.